Hello everyone, I am Mazda Rabbit Man, and yes, I have returned. If you've seen the title of this video, you probably have an idea on what this is going to be about. Just for um, a reminder, this is only for fun. This is meant to be my head cannon, not head cannon. This is meant to be um the way I see. No, not the way I see. This is my personal way of writing the DCU. Okay? Ready, set, go. The first movie in this series would, of course, be Superman 2025. Superman would kick off the main universe, DC universe, in a spectacular adventure where Superman would be introduced as a fresh new hero in a world of superheroes. Keep that in mind, in a world of superheroes. Now, superheroes get a bad rep nowadays, but Superman, the introduction of Superman, brings a fresh new uh, start to the superhero genre, which is just like being a good person. Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow, is a bit different. Woman of Tomorrow focuses on Supergirl, who ends up... Uh, okay, remember, this is a bit different from... James Gunn's DCU. Supergirl kicks off where he she adventures in an alien planet instead. And how she... This is her origin sort of how she became the Supergirl we all know and love. It's kind of like a Vegeta storyline in my head. And that would lead to the Authority. The Authority is essentially a group of morally ambiguous superheroes who try to capture Supergirl. And also Superman. Who are introduced into as the first new heroes of this new age of heroes. The Batman, the Brave and the Bold would then switch to the Batman, which is already a long term uh, veteran vigilante, and he meets his son, Damian Wayne. The story goes similarly to the, f the ba two first two Batman movies in the DCAMU, where we introduce Batman and Robin as Damian Wayne. And Batman basically learns how to be a father, an actual father this time, trying to keep his son safe, trying to keep, make sure he doesn't start killing. And then we have Swamp Thing, which introduces the myth mystical side of the DCU. Chapter 2 is f uh, just, it's purely, purely fan-made. This has nothing to do with the actual movies. Chapter 2 is Dawn of Justice. Sounds, um, what do you call this? Familiar? I know. Superman and Supergirl kicks off with, with this, this uh, arc. Rather than focusing on gods and monsters, Dawn of Justice focuses on the heroic side of the world. Superman and Supergirl is kind of like a rival movie. Uh, it's a movie about two rivals. Who eventually have to work together in order to benefit mankind for the better. Superman is a is a balance is more on heroic. He's more heroic. He's more uh he's he's just a good person basically. While Supergirl is like she was raised by in this continuity at least in my idea, she's braced he's she's raised by a brainiac and is led to believe that her um. The Kryptonian race were a bunch of conquerors. No, they weren't. They were protectors of the universe, essentially. But Supergirl's mind was twisted, and now she she uh, is adopted by Superman's family, and she tries to basically adapt to human life. Justice League. That's the culmination of all the heroes together. This Justice League would, in would include Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, The Flash, Supergirl, weirdly enough, Swamp Thing, and Cyborg. <laughs> and also Shazam, I forgot, but Shazam won't be included in this roster, in this specific roster yet. So these seven would be the main characters of the movie. They are meant, the authority will also have a big role in this ideal movie of mine, but they're the bad guy, Lex Luthor, <laughs> who is trying to um well conquer the world as usual but no i my, my main idea is not for him to conquer the world 
it's actually for Lex Luthor to try to destroy all superheroes because he hates superheroes. He hates super people. He doesn't believe in them. That's my idea of Lex Luthor. My take. Batman Bad Blood will continue on to Damian Wayne's lore. Um, I won't talk much about that because that's more of a Batman type deal. But it will focus more on Batman's relationship with his son and Talia. The Wonder Woman, um, it's a reboot of the Wonder Woman from 20, 2017. 12 years later, Wonder Woman comes back 2029. Wonder Woman comes back as a different character completely. And it won't be her origin story, rather it would be more on, it will focus more on the mystical side of the universe. Justice League Dark also focuses on the mystical side of this world. Justice League Dark is the sequel to Swamp Thing. And it's supposed to focus more on the relationship of Swamp Thing, Zatanna, and John Constantine. Who, uh, ideally, John Constantine here would either be Keanu Reeves or the John Constantine from the CW-verse. But I'm not sure. The Teen Titans. Um, yeah, this is self-explanatory. It's basically based... It's a, it's a teen pump-up punk rock uh, series movie where it focuses on, well, the Teen Titans. It's supposed to act as like a spiritual sequel to the series of the same name. Batman and Superman World's Finest, it ends with this. Batman and Superman basically try to balance their ideals together while they try to save the world from an ominous threat known as Darkseid. Chapter 3, Dark Ages. It starts with Justice League Doom. Batman betrays the, the Justice League by, with his Doom files. Batman vs. Superman, The Fall of Justice. Because of this, of the Doom event, Batman and Superman begin fighting over wh whether or not he is right or wrong. Batman is hunted down by the government and Superman is sent to take him down. Well, Batman wins, of course, in this timeline. And Superman eventually is forced to face, well with the fact that he's not exactly perfect. At this point of the series, Superman has become overconfident, by the way. And Batman has become, well, broken. And this arc of theirs focuses more on how they should act as heroes. And, um, what to call this? It's character arc. It's character arc, guys. Batman becomes more broken. Superman becomes more overconfident. Basically, the reverse of how they started in the, in the series. It's basically a Civil War level movie in my head. I won't go into detail with this because um, I'm trying to just like gloss over, I guess, of, on my idea of the series. Suicide Squad Hell to Pay The return is a sequel to The Suicide Squad. Death of Superman. This ruins Batman, by the way. Also, Batman and Wonder Woman in this movie, I guess, has a budding relationship. But this moment right here ruins Batman. And he's forced to realize that, oh god, I fucked up. Superman's dead. Because of Doomsday. Batman Wonder Woman World's Finest. This focuses on the relationship between Batman and Wonder Woman. It ends with kind of a tragedy. The Authority 2, sequel to Authority... Um, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna gloss over that one, but that's very important to this uh, series. They kind of feel like the weird X Force X Men kind of deal, you know. To the movies, Age of Justice, the Teen Titans, the Judas Contract is based on the movie of the same name. Focuses more on Raven, Justice League Dark Two. Okay, uh, we're gonna gloss over that. Batman: The Dark Knight Returns. Okay. Instead of interesting in love, instead of Superman hunting him down, it's Wonder Woman in this one. Because Wonder Woman has a relationship with Batman. And essentially, they have a kid together. Other than Damian Wayne. Yes, it's another one. Uh, I've considered him becoming, being Terry or something. But, basically, the tension between them eventually leads to Wonder Woman using their own child to try and take down the Batman. Flashpoint Paradox. This kind of, this is the darkest movie I've thought of. It's basically just an adaptation from the original Flashpoint Paradox. 
uh, comic book run and the 2013 movie, I think. The Suicide Squad one last job. This is the finale of the Suicide Squad. And Harley Quinn's and Peace... Pe- no, no, not Harley, not Harley Quinn's. Peacemaker's final um, job for the world, basically. Will he bring peace? The Rise of Superman. Um, yeah, this is basically Superman's Resurrection. Age of the Multiverse, Titanverse. Oh, I'm gonna gloss over that. This will include Titanverse, though. Will um include um a lot a lot of the original Teen Titans Go and Teen Titans characters. Arrow and the Flash return to the Arrowverse, or this is just called Arrowverse. They come back. <laughs> the original CW verse comes back for this movie, which leads to Justice League: Crisis on Infinite Earths and Final Crisis, which is them trying to defeat. Well, Darkseid and Anti-Monitor. Darkseid acts as his right-hand man. Anti-Monitor is just like this evil Palpatine who's not like... There's not much focus on him. The more the, the moral focus here is Darkseid. And that's it. That's it for now. Also, there's a second part, the Age of Young Justice, but that doesn't much matter. That, means, that feels more like fanon than it is canon. Justice League Final Crisis will end with Superman and Batman eventually sacrificing their lives for the world. But Batman survives, Superman doesn't. Or wait, no, it's the other way around. Batman dies, Superman doesn't. And Superman has to face with the fact that he has to essentially, like, help raise what's left of the legacy of the Batman. But I'm not sure, who knows, who will die, Batman or Superman? Should we vote that? I don't know. But that's essentially it. Thank you for watching. Um, I I I only glossed most of the movies here because it's not much. It's just a bunch of like fan made shenanigans I make. What do you think? Should James Gunn listen? Should Warner Brothers listen? I don't know. Thank you. And I'm going to continue the video anyway. So how in the world, in out of these all, out of all of these movies, am I going to focus on what Marvel did the best? Character growth. So basically, I have to start with these characters starting out to be unlikable, in some way or another. Superman should start as a people pleaser. He isn't the best, he's overly humble, he's overly people pleaser, and he would do anything, anything, to help out those in need. He's essentially a nice guy, but because he's a nice guy, he would essentially become, well, what do you call this? Well, he could be easily manipulated, he's naive, he's easily beaten up, mentally and psychologically. And he would essentially become a loser. <laughs> Not saying that that's true in real life, but in terms of writing, that's how most people pleasers go. And often or not, this person, he's trying to please everyone, he always ends up with a trolley problem. Trolley problem is where, um, you know, we all know that one guy here, there's a train track, you have, you have to like switch the track in, in order to save that one guy. But you'll end up killing six guys instead. Now, if Superman were to um, focus more on the trolley problem with various time, various areas in his life, for example, with Lois Lane versus his mom, or will he save this, will he save that, it could work as a movie. Could work. Especially with Lex Luthor in the scene. Now, Superman would eventually become overconfident, especially in the Dawn of Justice saga. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, also the Dark Ages saga. Because here, Superman would eventually learn that, hey, I can do anything. People love me. Like in Spider-Man 3. Problem is, as he grows to become more overconfident, he becomes more, well, detached. Less human, if you, if you know what I mean. He becomes uh, a bit more violent sometimes. And eventually, he relearns ha- what it means to be Superman. That's where he dies. And then he comes back in Rise of Superman, who cares? 
Okay, now let's go to Batman. How can we write the Batman into a good character? The Batman could start out as someone who is just... Well... Hmm, let's think of this. I just realized he can't be broken at the center of the story. Rather, what if he starts out as broken? If he starts out as already broken, and he found hope in his son, then that could work, right? I'm sorry, there's a f- weird creature on the... Yep, that's a beetle. Anyway, if it could start out with the Batman, starting out as like an old, broken veteran, no purpose in life, everyone left him, but then he finds Damien. He finds new purpose in life. He's about to quit being Batman, but then he learns, hey, I still have a purpose. I still have something going on. I still have a new Robin. I still have a way to lessen the dark in me. I don't have to go overboard anymore. And that's where Batman uses, not uses, reconnects with who he is. That's who, what the Batman, the Brave and the Bold should be. And then we go to the middle arc where it's Dawn of Justice. Batman starts becoming not overconfident in a sense. But he realizes that Damien Wayne is growing up. He's growing up. He doesn't need Batman anymore. He starts getting scared. He starts getting paranoid that he might leave him. And eventually the Batman would become like more and more paranoid. Eventually, he ends up fighting Superman because of it. And because of that fight, he eventually hurts Bat- Superman in such a way that Superman ends up becoming broken himself. Gets him killed because of Doomsday. Eventually, Batman, like, oh god, what have I done? Oh my god, I'm just re- I just realized Batman has become essentially the new Vegeta. And Kara, Kara zor or Supergirl might just be... She might just be Piccolo, but whatever. And here comes Batman. Oh God, what have I done? I have to make, I have to make up for my mistakes. That's what Batman does. He makes up for his mistakes. <laughs> Sounds terrible, but you know, that's what he did in the DCU. But to be fair, that's always what he has been doing, right? To make up for the pe- death of his parents, and now he has a new purpose, not. J- to focus more on justice rather than vengeance. He saw justice in the heart of Superman. And so Batman, he does what he does best. Emulate hope and justice from Superman. What is Wonder Woman's role in all of this? Is she, is she just a love interest of Batman? Well, no. Wonder Woman starts out also as naive. Not a people pleaser though. She's a bit violent. A bit angry. But overall, after she sees the goodness in someone like the Batman, who refuses to kill, she eventually finds not only just romance or whatever, not just love. Well, she does find love in the Batman, which, she re- which who reminded her so much of Steve Trevor. But she also finds something in humanity, and that is love. Similar to the Wonder Woman 2017 version. She finds love in humanity. She finds something about, um, what do you call this? Rather than acting aggressive all the time, or rather than acting uh, naive, she finds reality as well. Reality in, well, our society. That's something that Wonder Woman 2017 does fail in. There's no, re- it's more on mythical mis- mysticism, and we forget that, we kind of forgot about the fact that this could just be reality. Uh, and Wonder Woman can't do anything about it. Think about it. What if Wonder Woman ends instead of Iris being the one puppeteering everything, it ends with Wonder Woman just like realizing, oh, God, this is just humanity being humanity, can't do anything about it. What I can do, though, is help stop the war. And that's what I like about making, rewriting the DCEU and the DCU itself. They 
could do this. They could do this. They could like do proper character arcs for the characters. And I love that. I love that idea. I do hope they do that. So, they have a Flash. They have a Cyborg. They have, uh, what's his name? A Shazam? Or is it, uh, no, 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 no. They have a Green Lantern. Sorry. Um, what do they do with that? What do, what can they do? Well, also Supergirl. Forgot about her. We kind of forgot about Supergirl, huh? Supergirl essentially acts as the foil to Superman. Instead of being raised as naive or, not naive, more on uh, just a good person. She was raised as a, just a bad person. <laughs> Complete opposite of Clark. And essentially, she learns to reform. That's her, that's her, her basically her um, whole character arc. She learns to reform over time. The Flash, what's his character arc? Well, what should be his character arc? Maybe rather than um, trying to fake fix this f- fake fix the past, he could like focus more on the future. For Green Lantern, there are a lot of lanterns. I'm not gonna focus on them, but for Hal Jordan specifically, uh, he actually has a very similar goal to the Flash in my head. So my idea is that. Um, instead of focusing on his um, point of weakness, like origin story, let's focus more on his fo- fo- force of strength, which comes to his willpower. I mean, I guess that's also the weakness, right? Fear. So when you think about it, what if the whole point of Hal Jordan's adventure and whatever is about him conquering his fear? Yes, there's no Aquaman. Sorry, guys. There's no Aquaman in my ser- in my Justice League yet. Yet. I think he'll appear in the second Justice League or some crap. But, this seems like a solid story. For, lastly, for, um, Shazam, is it? It's either Shazam or it's gonna be Aquaman. But if it is Shazam, well... He's getting old, <laughs> and he has to. He has to like what they call this. He starts out as an immature child in Shazam, right? Like this, this child baby, man baby, who tries to be a hero but isn't. He's just a bully. What if he becomes the complete opposite of that? Like an actual man, a good, heroic, righteous man, a hero, in the end. For the other arcs, I'm not going to focus much on them, but for Damian Wayne, starts out as a violent killer to essentially could be the next Batman. And yeah, that's it. What do you think? Do you think we, we should push through with my version of the story or not? For Swamp Thing and the Justice League Dark, well, I need to be more in-depth with them, I guess. I'm not that familiar with their characters. I'm more familiar with the mainstream ones, like the Justice League themselves. But, if it's any consolation, Justice League Dark would focus more on the supernatural and the inner fear of of the human mind. Something like Joker crap, psychological fear and stuff like that. Based on what I've watched from their individual shows, it focuses more on that, right? Or specifically in the DC AMU. It's the horrors of psychological, well, horror. <laughs> Cosmic horror as well, I could also consider that. But, in the end, this is just a fan-made video. Doesn't matter at all. Unless they listen to the fans. But, who cares, right? It was fun talking to you guys, right? Fun talking to you about nerd crap. But, yeah. I really do hope they do something like this, like actual progressive character arcs for each of the characters. And for the villains, they could do like something regressive instead. For example, Bane. I love that in the DC animated movie universe because Bane became essentially a junkie for um the poison, the poison drug in his body. Or 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 Lex Luthor. He he didn't have a regressive character arc. 
Well, he kind of did. He got sick from all of that greedy crap he was doing from all that kryptonite. And I think it was a kryptonite. I don't know. It was never specified. But, yeah, it got the better of him. He died. He died doing what he hated, which is save the world. He was remembered for that. He always wanted to be remembered, right? That was so ironic. He wanted to be remembered for doing something terrible, for being on the same part as Superman. No. He died being a good person. That's funny. That's ironic. The Joker, someone who's, who's who laughs at insanity, well, he ends up becoming nothing but a joke himself. Like a past uh, echo of himself. Especially in the in the Batman Beyond movie, The Return of the Joker. I love that. No more Joker. Just nothing here. He's just dead. <laughs> I remember that Joker. He's like, he, pos- he ended up trying to possess Tim Drake. <sighs> so sad. But essentially, the villain should end with tragedy. Regressive. But that doesn't mean they have to be bad. All bad. Like Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy. They eventually get redeemed in my story arc. There's a movie for them. Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy. But... Yeah, that's it. What do you think? Do you think the Suicide Squad should have one last job? Or do you think Batman and Superman would become the world's finest in this movie world? I don't know. I just do hope. I, From the bottom of my heart, they could do it right this time. Thank you.